the fourth International Service Management Congress at Ostfalia University in Suderburg, Germany, with international lectures and international research workshops. The key results are following. Years ago, they put the electronic business, digital business, the e-learning into Los Banos, and it developed great and big time. I visited Joanne many times in Los Banos, also Professor Bagarino, and it always fills my heart when I hear how many Filipino overseas worker they educate all over the world, how they provide education to each and every island in the Philippines, some with internet, some without, and still it's the number one university in the Philippines. It always thrills me about the great work you're doing in this country with all the thunderstorms you have, earthquakes and uh, 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 floodings. Also just recently, Manila was affected by the thunderstorm, the typhoon. And I'm really, really happy working together with all you. And now I'm very, very happy to introduce you, Professor Dr. Joanne Serrano. She was in Germany last year, as you have seen in the video, and we're working together big time in e-learning. I learned so much from her in e-learning. She's a great professor, a great researcher, dedicated to the students. And uh, I'm very, very happy that we cooperate together, that we have this official co-hosting with this um, conference. I'm very happy, Joanne Serrano, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Marcus. Um, I cannot believe that uh, that was last year. It felt like, you know, forever because of this pandemic. But um, it's still very vivid in my memory how I enjoyed Germany, um, not just the view, but you know, the, our cooperation. Um, mm. I've missed working with the guys physically, mm. uh, Dave, um, Natsuku, uh, Dr. Yang, um, and I really hope that, you know, after this pandemic, uh, we'll still be able to work physically together. But um, as Dr. Capistrana said, um, at the moment, we really have to trust um, technology when it comes to cooperation. Um, for us in the academe, it's really a must that we uh, trust technology. Um, for UPOU, uh, this is not something new for us. Um, so uh, just to give a brief, brief background about myself. So um, I'm one of the associate professors here at the UP Open University. And as Dr. Launer has said, um, UPOU is one of the constituent units of the University of the Philippine system. And though we belong in one university, I haven't really met um, Eric and <laughs> Dr. Mansano in person. Um, so it's good that uh, we're able to um, see each other here. I hope that um, once everything is over, we'll be able, you'll be able to visit us here in Los Baños. And um, I occasionally go to Diliman for meetings as well. Um, so yeah, I'm teaching environmental advocacy and um, communication of scientific and technical information here at the uh, UP Open University, mostly graduate uh, programs. Um, and I'm very honored to be actually part of this global research. Um, I have promised Marcus that, you know, uh, <laughs> we'll be able to publish paper. But um, even though we have not really been affected by the pandemic, because we have been doing online uh, teaching and learning since 2007, um, the UPOU had to respond to the needs of various state universities and colleges. So since March, we have been providing webinars um, we have been conducting massive open online courses, and um, we have actually trained half a million <laughs> teachers in the Philippines. So it's it's been a you know roller coaster ride for us because of that. But um, yeah, I hope everything will be okay soon, and you know uh, traditional brick and mortar universities will go back to its um, um, usual uh, mode of learning. But of course, with innovations now in terms of technology. Okay, so let me just, um, 
uh, I think you're, can, sorry. Can you see the presenter's view? Is it just my view? Uh, we have the presenter's view. All right, let me just. Um, Let me just fix that uh, for a while. No problem. In, in the meantime, it's funny to say that Joanne and me, we, have, we, have, we met so many times in Germany and Los Banos, and you did not met with Julio and Eric in, in Manila. That's a truly global world, it's amazing. I think Joanne is again looking at her presentation that will be online soon. And I also see that our next speaker is already online, Professor Dr. Joanna Alishkevich. I will make her a presenter then afterwards and showing you another video about our research. And as you can see that in the last two years, we were able here at Ostfalia University at the campus Suderberg to build up a great relationship to great professors around the world. And they were visiting us here in um, Suderberg. And then I will see that the presentation looks good. Yeah. And we can see it fine. And I hope next year, maybe the year after, we can all visit in Zuderberg again. And as uh, Joan Serrano once said, Marcus, are you eating anything else than asparagus? Because Joanne was in Germany in May last year, and it's asparagus season. And then every restaurant offered asparagus in very different flavors. And all our guests thought that Germans eat asparagus all the time. Unfortunately not, it tastes well, but it's only in May and you have had a wonderful time uh, choosing to visit us. I see the presentation is ready, it looks perfect and we're very happy to learn more about it. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Launer. Thank you for um, clarifying that uh, you also eat other stuff because, <laughs> but although I enjoyed uh, asparagus, um, after a while you start uh, to miss, uh, you know, the usual food that you eat in the Philippines. But I really enjoyed um, uh, my stay there. Okay, so um, just to um, put it forward, this is still, um, you know, an initial analysis that I tried uh, to do with the data um, that was available for our global research. So it's, um, I think it's 6 p.m. here in the Philippines. So good evening, Philippines and the rest of Asia and good morning, Germany and the rest of Europe and the world. So um, today I'll be presenting a paper on understanding digital trust in the workplace, um, but I focused uh, on the case of the Philippines. So I'll basically be presenting data from the Philippines. Um, so, of course, this is with Prof. Uh, Loner and uh, one of my staff. Okay, so um, we all know that we are now in a digital era. And um, my colleagues who have presented before me have um, emphasized enough that trust has become increasingly essential in this digital age. And in this digital society, the question about breaches are not a matter of if, but a question of when. Before COVID-19, many of us have been using digital technology in many aspects of our lives. But uh, with the pandemic, uh, especially during the lockdowns, digital technology has become omnipresent in our lives. Digital technology is increasingly underpinning how organizations operate, including universities and academic institutions. According to OpenVolt's uh, Broadcast Insights report, for the first quarter of this year, the average broadband consumption has actually increased to 402.5 gigabytes 
from 273.5 gigabytes during the same time uh, in 2019. So in last year, um, you can see a dramatic increase. So this around 47% uh, 47 increase. Um, and it's also a 17% uh, rise over the fourth quarter in 2019, which saw 344 gigabyte uh, in broadband usage. Now, recent reports show that internet services have uh, seen increase in usage from 40% to 100% um, compared to the pre-lockdown levels. And, um, you know, some of us uh, might not know Zoom before the... Um, uh, the lockdown period, but um, Zoom uh, and other video conferencing services has actually seen a 10 times increase in usage. So before um, uh, many um, academics, um, many teachers just know about, you know, other uh, conferencing um, like uh, Messenger probably, Viber, but now um, we are now all experts in using Zoom. And, but we know uh, that although digitalization bring in unimaginable opportunities, it also bring with it threats and risks. And with the increase in internet uh, usage, it also brings in rise in digital attacks done daily. So just in our university, we have um, recorded um, thousand attacks in one of our system in just a day. So uh, you can imagine that uh, because of this uh, um, high usage in, uh, in, uh, over the internet in terms of technology, um, it also brings in um, unimaginable uh, threats and risk. And in this uncertain environment, ensuring the trust of those who use digital services is a key issue. And this, and this will influence how we use technology in the future. Okay, so um, for this paper, uh, for this research, so as I mentioned, this is just very initial level of analysis. So I tried to examine the level of trust on digital technology among Filipinos. So um, you have seen the global data presented by my colleagues. So I'll just be focusing on the data from the Philippines. Try to explore the key digital disruptions that necessitates digital trust and develop a framework to further understand how digital trust is built specifically in the context of the Philippines. Now, let us try to define trust and digital trust. So um, according to IDC, trust enables decisions to be made between two or more entities that reflects a level of confidence, both in terms of quantifiable risk and subjective reputation that enable a transaction to occur for mutual benefit. And when we talk of digital trust, it is defined as the measure of consumer, partner, and employee confidence in, our, in an organization's ability to protect and secure data, uh, the data privacy of individuals. And now because of this pandemic, according to Simon Tiff, uh, the Vice President of Security at IDCs, uh, Never, never before has the concept of trust been so critical to business as we are unable to socially interact. Digital interaction has become, for many, the, one, the only way to conduct business and deliver work. So this is actually very true um, during, during this pandemic. So personally, I, haven't, I can just count in my uh, two hands the number of times that I went out. So I basically work from home. I, uh, you know, let people do my groceries um, because I still do not trust uh, the outside world. So um, I, I personally do a, a lot of um, in, uh, transactions uh, digitally. Okay. Now uh, the the type of trust and relationships that are possible uh, via digital communication are shaped both by the nature of the medium and the interactions undertaken. Technology and what people do with it is provisional, impermanent, and influx on many levels, including the speed of development and the type of relationships people are having when mediated by technology. Digital environments are designed to provoke users to disclose a significant amount of information. 
Digital trust stems from a combination of different factors. So we have security, identifiability, and traceability, and that's according to Manila, Matilla and Cipella. And platforms evolve over time and create diverse lo logics resulting in inter- and intra-platform differences, and that's according to Mall. Okay, um, and you know, literature also shows that there is a direct correlation between trust and economic progress. So um, I think it's a given, and we have established that uh, trust is very important, not just in you know accessing data, but even uh, in terms of uh, nation's progress uh, economically. Okay, so. Uh, this study, in terms of methodology, made use of a mixed method uh, design. So uh, the data, uh, the, the survey was, uh, the data were collected concurrently. So I, uh, I made use of the data, the global research data. Uh, um, as you know, in an, a concurrent data collection, the quantitative and qualita qualitative data coll uh, collection occur at different levels and at different levels of analysis. So for the quality, uh, quantitative data, data from the Philippines from the global research on digital trust and teamwork, uh, which is cited by Prof. Uh, Lohner, were analyzed. And for the uh, qualitative data, responses by Philippine professionals, mostly from the academe, were analyzed. Um, OK, so this is basically um, just a descriptive analysis of the quantitative data from the Philippine side. Um, kudos to uh, the very comprehensive statistical analysis done by uh, Dr. Capistrano, but um, what, I'll, what I'll be showing you is a simple descriptive analysis of the data that uh, have, have been collected from the uh, Philippine side. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, the global research on digital trust and teamwork headed by Prof. Lohner where in various countries all over the world have participated. So there were uh, 472 Filipinos who participated in the study. So um, as you can see in the table, um, um, most are in 29 to majority of the participants were aged 49 to 58 years old. Uh, followed by 29 to 38 years old. Uh, mostly were uh, male and works in private organizations. Although 91 of the respondents did not provide an answer for their organizational affiliation. Okay, so um, it's always interesting that uh, to show that there is a gender disaggregation of data. So as you can see here, there are 244 female, uh, sorry, male, uh, 188 female and 40 LGBTQ. And uh, of course, majority were from the private, um, some uh, half were from the government, uh, but uh, 91 of the, of the respondents uh, did not provide data. Okay. So um, to examine the level of trust on digital technology among Filipinos, the, I'm, I'll be presenting the data collected on digital platforms available and used in the workplace, means of communication in the workplace, sought out features of digital technologies, um, the level of trust with digital technologies in the workplace, and the level of trust with people in the workplace, uh, such as management, IT, data, and data support, and external entities. Okay. So uh, figure one uh, presents the number of users in each typical digital platform in the workplace. So results show that the email is most available or most used. So of course, uh, this could be attributed to the fact that most uh, office or work communications are delivered using emails. Um, social networking sites such as uh, Facebook and Twitter follow. So um, social media is commonly used, uh, you know, during breaks to browse through news and to get connected with other colleagues. Um, Kao et al. Suggest, also suggested uh, in their study that the use of social media in the workplace enhances knowledge transfer among employees by fostering trust, thus leading to better performance. 
And uh, as we all know, more and more organizations now are allowing, um, even before COVID, even before the lockdown, more and more organizations are allowing the use of social media um, for colleagues to communicate with each other. And it is also used as an official, sometimes an official platform for work-related um, activities. And again, there were 91 participants who didn't answer the questions. Other digital platforms stated by the participants were um, learning management system, uh, Messenger, uh, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and Workplace by Facebook. Now for figure two, the means of communicating with colleagues in the workplace are shown. An average of 256 participants represented uh, in green bars responded that they communicate with supervisors, co-workers, subordinates, customers, or clients, and other external stakeholders digitally and face-to-face. -face. So um, many of the data, most of the data here were collected pre-COVID, but um, some of the data still came in after COVID. So probably this could be attributed also to the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic where some organizations had to set up alternative working arrangements to prevent the spread of the virus in the workplace. Or some could be periodically working in a work from home set up pre-COVID. Um, also shown in the figure is that the most number of responses for digital communication is with external stakeholders. Um, this could be inferred as communications via emails, such as supports, requests, inquiries, or instant messaging, which could also be related, again, to the effects of COVID-19, or for, you know, um, we use instant messaging for to get immediate feedback and reply uh, from our colleagues and uh, co-workers. Okay. Um, then uh, the next few slides for table four, presents the digital technology uh, features sought or prioritized by Filipinos in the workplace. For this set of features, ethics and control of data access and use was tagged with high priority, while uh, integration and reusability was, the mo was most chosen as not a priority. Okay, so um, the uh, high priority was ethics uh, and control of data access. And data privacy in organizations remain an important feature in the, uh, digital technologies and in any organization, uh, any organizational function and process. And securing and properly handling data is a responsibility guided by precautions, guidelines, and privacy laws or regulations that should be observed in any technology and should be included in the accountability of of any organization that's according to Kurnan and Williams. For table 4.2, uh, sorry, 4.2, personal data protection is high priority, while shareability had, uh, had most, uh, not, uh, not a priority responses. Personal data protection uh, would be chosen high priority as expected since users, uh, users of digital technology would want you know, to secure their information or accounts and prevent any unauthorized use of their information. Uh, this could be related to the ethical access and use of data discussed uh, in the previous slide. Okay, and for um, table three, data accuracy is high priority while reliability and business continuity are not priorities. Uh, data accuracy can be considered high priority since organizations would want their technologies to reflect and generate correct information. Errors in data entries could have statistical or analytical implications, example, uh, wrong count of employees per age range, wrong uh, count of employees pursuing further uh, studies, etc. And this is based on the study by bar chart and pace. Overall, in table four, uh, Data protection had the most high priority responses, total of 210, while integration and reu reusability, uh, total of 18, had the most uh, not a priority responses. Okay, now figures uh, three to five present the level of trust of Filipinos in various digital technologies available and used in the workplace. So in figure three, 
laptop computers had the most number of participants for high level of trust, uh, which is represented by the violet bar. This could be because laptop uh, computers are the available or provided tool in the workplace, unlike tablets and smart wearable devices. So smart watches and other smart wearable devices had the most number of not trusted at all responses, uh, which are in blue bars and does not apply responses in yellow bars. It could not be trusted perhaps since smart watches are usually used as you know, uh, fitness watches, which may or may not present accurate uh, statuses. And then like a tablet or a laptop, a smart watch is less like the own. Okay. Um, and then in figure four, all of these technologies, uh, video surveillance, ID system in daily time recording, ID system of company entrance and exits, ID system in cafeteria, ID system in printing and duplication services, workflow management, email tracking and monitoring system, and global positioning services in cars, except for email tracking and monitoring were highly trusted by the participants. Um, this could be due to the fact that these technologies require accurate information and are most likely the most secure system since personal data, example, full name of employees, uh, employee number, email addresses, uh, home addresses, uh, actual location are stored or housed. And however, ID system uh, in cafeteria had the most not trusted at all and most does not apply responses. So, um, well, in the Philippines, ID system in cafeteria is actually, uh, you know, some, something that is not yet popular. For figure five, all of these technologies were trusted by the participants, although sales management systems, reservation systems, stock control systems, and internet bots had the most does not apply responses. Internet bots, however, had the most number of not trusted at all responses. This could be perhaps the internet bots encountered by the participants were not able to satisfactorily perform their roles, example, incorrect or incomplete response to an inquiry, or may be viewed as inferior to communicating with an actual uh, support staff or an actual person. Payroll systems had the most number of high level of trust responses, maybe due to its ability to uh, perform well by delivering pays on time and to the right people. It also houses um, personal information uh, such as uh, bank account, uh, bank account numbers, employee numbers, full names, probably age, uh, birth dates, uh, etc. Now for figure six, it presents the level of trust with people in the workplace, specifically with management. Results show that management is trusted with top management being highly trusted. Middle management, however, had the most less trusted responses. Um, these responses could be uh, so that top management, uh, because top management makes the decisions that affect the whole organizations, while middle management may have formal responsibilities but are not as responsible for making decisions compared to the top management. Now in figure seven, IT and data support people are shown. Almost each um, IT or data support person is trusted with a computer systems development team being highly trusted. The IT team could be one of the most trusted units or departments in any organization since predominantly they are responsible for handling and securing systems which would most likely contain all of the information of each unit and of the whole organization. Lastly, in figure eight, external entities of the workplace are shown. Majority of these external entities are trusted, but logistics, service provider, retailer, government or schools and non-government agencies had the most less trusted responses. This result could be attributed to the varying services experienced by the respondents with these external entities. Government or public service or schools or universities, however, had the most high level of trust responses. This could be due to the you know, uh, nature of uh, this organization, social services, public service programs, 
and knowledge generations provided by these uh, institutions. And for other external entities or private customers, 200 of the respondents did not answer in addition to the 91 respondents who did not answer this question at all. Okay, so that's for the quantitative part. So as I mentioned, um, there was an, a qualitative analysis uh, which resulted to these themes. So digital, response, uh, respond, uh, dis digital disruptions that require digital trust. So um, when we talk of digital disruptions, this refers to those digital technology and practices that um, shakes the status quo. And digital disruption is the change that occurs when new digital technologies and business models affect the value proposition of existing goods and services. Generally, digital disruption happens after a digital innovation, such as we have the big data, uh, the machine learning, the internet of things, or the bring your own device uh, movement. Uh, what is unique with what is happening now is that the global public health crisis has created a digital disruption, unlike what we have seen before, because of its scale and how it affected the customer expectations and how uh, customer behaviors evolved, which caused uh, organizations and businesses to create new products and services to address the demands. So based on this specific context, the following are the digital disruptions would, which would require focus on digital trust. So as I mentioned, these are the themes that emerge uh, out of the qualitative data. So of course, we have the work from home technology and arrange, uh, arrangements. Uh, the coronavirus has abruptly changed the way we work. And some of these changes may be not on a short term, but can be, lo can be a long-term one and will eventually cause a work uh, culture revolution. So in the second part of the study, which focused on um, actually the academe, educators are forced to work from home outside the safety of their organization's firewall and IT support. So with majority of people working from home, there is a greater risk and threat, especially in the amount of the data that is shared outside of the secured firewalls of organizations. And then, of course, we have online learning. So we have seen um, a number, or probably all universities now globally, um, transitioning to online learning because of the uh, pandemic and because of the lockdowns. Um, and we are seeing that even after this pandemic, there will be a shift in the way we deliver our courses. So I don't see uh, traditional universities going back to the you know, the business as usual. So there will always be um, hybrid um, instructional delivery that will be done, um, learning from the lessons that, uh, you know, we have gained from this uh, pandemic. Um, so the shift on, but of course, the shift to online learning also increases people's uncertainty and anxiety when it comes to access, disclosure, and retention. And then of course, uh, another theme is on social media. We have seen a rise in the use of social media uh, because uh, people are now connecting through social media. People who were not able to see each other physically before, um, they had to connect to social media. And of course, we have uh, seen the rise of cloud. Uh, people before were not trusting cloud and were trying to uh, maintain their own physical servers in their own organizations. But with the pandemic, uh, there is this rise in the use of cloud. And of course, the speed of technology change. We have seen a number of uh, technology um, innovations that have been introduced uh, because of the current pandemic. And of course, we have seen an increase in digital transactions. As I've mentioned personally, I have done almost all of my uh, personal, official, and other transactions uh, digitally and online. So uh, these are the digital disruptions that, of course, require digital trust. So um, when we talk, of course, of work from home technology, there is a need for secure, appropriate, and uh, available infrastructure and resources, need for secure online transactions or processes related to work, need for proper training sessions for using ICTs, cloud storage of work files, and the primary concern for Filipinos, of course, is still internet availability and connectivity. 
And then online learning, uh, primary concern for Filipinos is internet access and connectivity, need for definite and clear guidelines for online learning, need for secure, appropriate, and available infrastructure and resources, need to address accessibility, inclusivity, and quality, and teachers and students must overcome the fear of potentially wasting time disclosing sensitive information and losing submitted work. And um, social media, there's a need for secure platforms. Platforms with instant messaging and that uses a small internet bandwidth are preferred. Users must be critical of information that are shared through uh, social media, prone to easy spread of fake news and misinformation, and the need to improve digital skills. And it allows for building of relationships similar to a real world setting. And of course, the cloud. Uh, still needs for secure platforms and you know research has shown how secured clouds clouds are so uh, um, everything is encrypted and private privacy of data is secured in cloud storage and it allows for more flexible work arrangements and more resilient and um, speed of technology everything now is uh, you know have a technology driven processes there is a need to invest in technology that can adapt to future changes and uh, the increase in digital transactions, there is a need for secure platforms and trust in the system. And of course, digital skills are essentials. And to end, um, given this is the uh, framework that I have come up with, given the complexity and diversity of digital technology, as well as the continuous changes in the ICT landscape, this study was able to come up with the elements uh, form part of a framework as adapted from the Smith's honeycomb model, uh, which is to frame the digital trust. Um, this framework, framework has seven building blocks uh, be, uh, based on the data collected, both quantitatively and qualitatively. So we have, we have value, uh, the value building block, which refers to connectedness, relationships, loyalty, and focus on people. Accuracy, which means confidence in the data that is generated and shared. Resilience, which refers to the ability of a, an organization to survive a crisis and thrive in a world of uncertainty. We have accountability and self-disclosure. Uh, we have data access and control. And of course, we have the security and in the middle is uh, trust. These building blocks are not mutually exclusive and need not all be present in all uh, digital engagement. But uh, you know, these building blocks are constructs that allow us to make sense of how different levels of digital technology functionality can be configured. And uh, each block will allow us to make sense of how people in organizations, especially in the academe, view digital media and understand the range of interactions and, eg and engagement that they use it. Okay, so um, I think that ends my presentation. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening. Joanne, thank you so much. Great research result in a very short time. Um, I have to mention that the data collection just recently ended and that we are presenting here first statistical results, hypothesis, and theories so this whole research is still um, just starting to get analyzed. Um, Joanne, thank you so much. Keep up with the great work. Thank you very much for listening. Visit our website, YouTube channel, and Facebook site on the internet.